Hey, buddies, Potato Big Whiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as our good old Civilization Portugal in the Maritime Modded series. Go ahead and check out the links in the description if you want to play with the mods yourself. For now, though, we just unlocked chemistry, and it is time to go through our empire and do a very, very important thing. We're going to queue up research labs in every single city. Now, not every city has a campus, so you know, take every city with a grain of salt. However, the research lab is currently giving us plus nine science. It will give us plus five science when it is powered, which is a 14 science boost. Plus, if we focus on science and we have all three scientist slots in our campuses filled, this would be another three science potential from this. Well, five. So yeah, this, is, this, this thing gives us a huge amount of science and one of the biggest choke holds, one of the biggest uh, uh, choke points for winning a science victory is actually just getting through the tech tree. We're four turning techs in the atomic era, six turning them in the information era, and seven turning them in the future era. We would like to get that down a little bit. So I think about a thousand science per turn is about when it starts being really, really good. I would like to be making about 800 science per turn for the atomic era, maybe closer to a thousand for the information era, it would like to be either 800 or 1,100 or about 1,300 to you know, 800 to 1,300, and then 900 to 1,300. And then for the final tier, we just needed an insane amount of science. So there are a few ways that we're going to work on to achieve this. And one of them is to make sure that we build our research labs in record time. Now, in cities where it might take like a while, I'd probably just come in here and purchase those research labs because this went from 25 science to 42. So you imagine that happening through many, 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 many of my cities. And this is the power of having this much gold in the bank. Once we finish that waterfront, we'll get to work on the campus. We got the archeological museum over here. It's only nine turns for the research lab. Anything that's like 10 turns for the research lab feels pretty good. I probably won't bother buying it. It is, it's still fine to buy it. Seven turns feels like I shouldn't buy it. Because um, I do, I do need, still need some gold to buy like granaries over here. Also, I want to buy monuments and then I want to buy tiles for these builders to improve. So it's, it's kind of one of these things where you have to kind of, you know, you have to balance the number of resources that you're inputting into any one action to try to maximize the total, you know, empire wide benefits that you're able to seek. So let's go ahead and just scan through our cities for all our campuses. Uh, there is a research lab up here in Athena. I'm going to go ahead and buy that and then we will get to work on the breakwater. Uh, we did just get the, har well, we're working on the harbor in here. Navigation school isn't built yet in some of these cities, still working on it. It's a process, but we are up to now 484 signs. We've got two goals. One of them is to get control of Lima, and then the other is to get control of Cardiff. Getting control of Cardiff will give us plus two power for every harbor building, which is going to be two power from the lighthouse and two power from the shipyard, which is a total of four power, which is enough power to do the research lab. So that's going to be part of our goal. Now that we've completed the research lab, I do think it's time that we move in and pick up the spaceport. Getting the spaceports built nice and early is a great way to push your victory forward. I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a trade route with Indonesia. That's a lot of gold. Looking very happy on that front. Let's coastally raid that building. I guess you're just a sacrificial coastal raider because you were just a, a ship that I picked up cheaply via killing. Let's pop you over here to start pillaging that holy site. Uh, may as well coastal raid that. It is worth 100 gold. Combine these two guys together. Pirate ship can move down here and threaten Bogota. He should be looking for peace now. And he should be willing to pay us a lot of money for peace. So I think I'm going to take that 33 gold per turn for that piece. I'm going to select our next target. Like, who do I think looks like they have a fairly exposed empire where I could get a few pillages? Honestly, Hungary is a likely candidate. So I'm going to go ahead and denounce Hungary. And let's also look for someone else that we could do. I mean, Georgia is honestly pretty exposed to the coast as well. And I think Mongolia, I mean, Mongolia is still burning from the last time I hit them. But I, you know what? I think Mongolia might be another good target. So we can make a lot of yields out of that. So I'm going to go ahead and denounce him too. I will just focus on sending our ships back and forth around this area, pillaging, making money, doing damage, you know, just general piracy stuff. We're going to do a little bit, a little Portuguese piracy. Uh, in the new city, we are going to go ahead and purchase the granary. And we're going to purchase the monument. And I'm going to do something a little bit unorthodox. I'm going to buy out to the campus location so I can get that started early. Drop the fishing boats here. It's gonna get us a nice productive tile. Looking happy with that. Could probably get another fishing boat, fishing boat. Yeah, there's a few fishing boats in here we can still get. Uh, may as well grab myself another builder in there, even if it makes the 
extended late game a little bit harder to spend so much time on builders and, and probably in real time terms just spending this much energy developing these crappy cities is probably actually slowing the game down like in real human minutes it is just kind of fun to build these empires and optimize them and build them up you know navigation school finished in here let's go ahead and purchase that research lab uh, make sure the city is focused on food production and science so it'll crank out 57 science we're up to 400 and, uh, sorry 547 science per turn my goal was to double my science in this time period we've got a waterfront we've got a harbor and we've got a campus the only other thing that I maybe could consider building is a water park if I really wanted it. There's nothing wrong with going for the water park, in my opinion. And so I think I will. The extra amenities are nice. The extra yields are nice. We definitely want to be traded with Catalhoyuk. Let's have a look at Envoy quests. Looks like train a biplane is one. Eureka for flight. Eureka for steel. Class struggle. Yeah, nothing here is particularly easy. I guess I could buy slash upgrade an AT crew. So let's just pop you out there we'll pop into this city and we'll buy an AT crew for the envoy we'll buy the tile for this cramps over here in Silves, and we'll continue to improve these tiles like, I mean if we just look at the city now food and production focus it's churning along it will very very quickly get up to speed both in terms of building a harbor and just generally being a city with a decent population we're gonna buy this dyes tile we'll go ahead and improve that it's probably time we also talk to the AI and just sold off a bunch of spare resources um, and then maybe even looked to purchase like NIDER. Maybe it would be good to purchase the luxury resources that they have spare. Let's see if anyone wants to buy our coal, buy our horses, buy our iron. Although we don't really have iron income, so I might just drop that. But yeah, like you'll buy my coal, you'll buy my horses. Just trying to optimize the amount of gold that we get. I haven't really been doing that because I haven't needed to. Boom, boom. We move this over there. In Funchal, we're going to buy out to this and boom, drop a fishing boat. And I'm just going to long walk all of my boats to Hungarian waters just by right clicking in the general area. I don't care when they get there. I just care that they get there eventually. Um, let's buy this extra tile here in Goa. I will drop the fishing boat. It's starting to look really good as a city. Like it's starting to look accomplished. We'll drop the fishing boat in Port Alegre. Look at that juicy tile. Three food, three production, three gold and a culture helping the city get its foot in the door. Another fishing boat in Sedede Velha. Remember, these fishing boats are just the thing that we're focusing on in the short term because we have the fish boat Pantheon, so we get a lot of benefit from that. Right, we've unlocked flight, which does give us a boost to our tourism. Um, that's not particularly interesting. I would like to build an aer aerodrome or two, but I can't build it in the capital. Um, I might be able to fit one into Andy Fisher. Ooh, can I steal a tile from somewhere? No, it looks like I don't have any flat tiles to build the aerodrome on. So Andy Frazier will have to be my aerodrome city, which kind of sucks. I was hoping my capital could participate in that, but that's okay. Nice, we got the campus in Druv Jar. Let's go ahead and just buy library. Okay, now I want you to look at the science in the city. We go from 12.5 uh, uh, science, we buy the library, 17.3, we buy the navigation school, 27, we buy the research lab, boom, 52.1. So I really just want to point out, now it's up to 63. Like the scale of science you can get from building up your campuses to maximum level is insane. Like it is, it is, it is insane what you can do. And a part of that is backed up by the amenities, which is why I'm going for the water park now to make sure that I lock in this city's amenity level. We got the waterfront in Piet Brenhofer. I am going to probably buy the breakwater when I can, but I need to get this campus online because remember, every single city has the potential to produce that kind of level of science. Buy another fishing tile in this city. We need to be careful about how much money we're spending on how many different things because we, we, we need to buy a lot of stuff, basically is how that sentence finishes, is we have a lot of stuff that we want slash need to buy and all of it takes money. Now, the sheer capacity we have for purchasing power right now is insane. And it's part of the reason my empire is accelerating the way that it is, that we've built up this massive gold economy that allows me to do what I call pivots. I am pivoting my economy to science. I did have 800 to 900 culture and like 200 science maybe 20 turns ago. And now we're in the middle of a science pivot um, we hit some pretty key technologies, and when we pivot, we basically, using the sort of a, a gravitational assist, right, of the gold and the culture to swing into a really strong science game. 
Still. Okay, Professional Sports is unlocked, which is one step away from Space Race, which is perfect. We did have the Aquarium in Stony Baloney. The Aquatic Center is worth an extra three amenities. We have the campus built. There are three amenities in here. The city is not powered as far as I can tell. Uh, we do have the envoys. I'm going to go ahead and prioritize Lima. I'm going to put two envoys into Lima. Get suzerainty of Lima. Now we're up to 791. I'll put another envoy into Cardiff. And hopefully soon we can get another envoy. Well, what I could do, I could actually change my government around here to optimize for envoys. Like if I plug in gunboat diplomacy, take out colonial taxes and plug in thalassocracy, this is a pretty significant boost in influence, right? We're making 12 per turn right now, and now we're making 19 per turn. That seems pretty damn reasonable. I will get the aquatic center. It is potentially three amenities in every city within nine tiles. So if I go to a nine tile range here, boom, 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 um, this thing hits six cities, which is massive. So that's six times three amenities, uh, 18 amenities. Again, keeping all of these cities up at the ecstatic level, getting us 20% extra yields. Massive, massive benefit. Campus is complete in here. Harbor is complete in here. Waterfront is complete in here. This could be a city where it would be worth it to go for an entertainment complex or an aerodrome, depending on if we wanted to go to war stuff. I think I'll grab the entertainment complex for extra amenities. Although actually technically water parks are better because they get an extra amenity from being adjacent to kelp forest, I believe. Navigation school completed in here. I'll go ahead and buy the research lab make sure this city is focused on food production and science and now it's up to 77 science per turn it's getting a 35 percent boost from kilwa and our science our, 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 our um amenities uh let's get a oh i don't have a kelp forest here so i will just plonk that down right there that's fine this is going to be worth uh three amenities in this city making sure that i can maintain that amenity level um, i will trade with kabul I do have room for more trade routes. So one, two, and that should do it. Okay, boom, founding a city here. We're getting a harbor. Um, I will purchase the watermill and probably spend some time chopping here to get that harbor done slightly faster. When I say slightly faster, I mean absolutely immediately finishing that harbor. Like it's actually insane how good chopping is. And if you're not chopping in your game, you're fucking up. That's what I'm telling you, okay? If you are not chopping, if you're not going through, with like a bulldozer and absolutely eviscerating every green thing in your empire, you're fucking up. This is what I'm going to tell you, okay? Deforestation built the modern world, all right? Now we got to rebuild those forests after we scoop out all their delicious, delicious uh, production. Okay, that's my hot take. That's what Civ taught me. Listen, I get, you know, I get all my information from video games, which is probably better than where most political streamers get their information. Now, okay, Seaside Resort and Aluminium is unlocked. We are one tech away from spaceports, which means we need to start thinking about where our governor titles are going to go, particularly when it comes to Reina. And that also means I need to come back to the capital and very quickly grab myself the Royal Society. Now, why do we go for the Royal Society when we're going for a science game? It's actually very, very straightforward, okay? A, we want the governor title to be able to buy a spaceport with Reina. B, we want the ability for builders to be able to use all of their charges to provide bonus production to a district project. That bonus applies to all of the space race projects. This effectively allows us to move production from some cities to other cities around our empire. And if we have a strong enough gold income, we can buy six charge builders, which can do a significant percentage of every single spaceport project every turn and um, now you can only do it once per turn per spaceport but it is super super powerful so uh, we are going to go ahead and grab ourselves the royal society also i didn't mean to build ironclad so i'm going to go ahead and just delete that uh, and we're going to go ahead and trade with laventa and banjar mason will trade with two as well okay lumber mill going down in tomar boom fishing boat in Silves. oh free settler from hungary please tell me i'm able to declare war one turn can i like block him from getting ashore I'm not going to be spending any more money in my cities because I want that money to be preserved for the ability to purchase a, a thing, a spaceport. Yeah, I need my money to buy spaceports, basically, is what it comes down to. Plus two error score there. Excellent cities reach 25 population for the first time in the world. Excellent. Um, my city of Noor did that. We got a research lab in Andy Fraser. We have the campus, the harbor, the industrial zone, the aqueduct. We have not built our waterfront in here. 
we have the potential to build an aerodrome. I will get the waterfront really quickly, even though it's not the greatest waterfront of all time. It is still quite good. Also going to make sure that we're focusing on science in here for sure. Food production and science seems quite good. The city is struggling a little bit for food uh, because it's working so many specialized tiles, but it has like insane productivity, which I love. All right, Hungary, let's uh, go. We're going to do a colonial war. Half the usual grievances for a colonial war because he's two areas of technology behind me. We steal this. We shoot you. You pop in. You shoot this bad boy. Can we steal the boat? Not quite, but we can't get this kill. And let's see if we can yoink a builder. So already opening turn of the war, huge success. We managed to steal incredible value taking settlers from Hungary. Nice. We just discovered rocketry which means our governor title should line up perfectly to get contractor the turn that we unlocked spaceports which means over here in Andy Fraser now nor does have more production but in Andy Fraser we can go ahead and immediately purchase ourselves the spaceport for 6000 gold we have the spaceport built in nor we can build the spaceport in 8 turns and in Andy Fraser we can spend just a little bit of time launching that earth satellite while the city is busy and now this is where things are going to get a little bit difficult because every single turn, I need to be able to afford, while I'm running a spaceport project, I need to be able to build a builder every single turn. But I also need a military engineer. And where the hell am I going to get a military engineer? Well, I need to get a little bit more coin. Because I need to build railroads to that city. And basically, I need to build a railroad from Nor to this spaceport so my builders can get there in a single turn. Um, that way I'm not delayed. I think it's very important when you're playing the kind of game that I'm playing is to, the second you get rocketry, you need to get computers. Um, so that you can defend your tiles. Because if you look here, you can see, is, is there, is there a, can I just like do flood? Is that lowland I want to look up? Yeah, coastal lowland. If I search for coastal lowland, it will just highlight all of the possible floodable tiles. And if you just look around my empire, like this whole island could be flooding. So we need to get, ideally, I mean, is, is Valletta in the game? I don't remember. No, there's no Valletta in the game. So we are going to have to use military engineers pretty extensively to defend our water. Uh, defend our waterways. So I am going to go ahead and build more armadas, more arsenals so that I can get military engineers. Chop here to improve Tomar. And the kind of crappy thing here is Port Alegre is basically as improved as it will get. So I just can just send this builder off somewhere else. I mean, in theory, I mean, not necessarily in theory, but I, I can actually just settle here as well. And this is a pretty kick-ass settlement location. So I will do that. All righty, let's pop in there. We'll do a quick little coastal raid. You're a little bit low on health. Why don't you pop back over here to a nice safe distance? You're coming around. You're going to coastal raid this. Then you're going to... S oh, that used to buy your movement. That's fine. Let's swoop you in on the edge here so you can coastally raid this. Uh, let's harvest the deer to finish the harbor. Then we'll pop Horatio Nelson to get the lighthouse and shipyard in here. This will bring fun channel up to 18 production, which feels amazing. Food and production prioritized. We have unlocked electricity, which does give us access to the seaport, which is plus one gold in all coastal tiles for the city, as, which is plus two for coast tiles with improved resources. Hydroelectric dam, oil power plant, as well as submarines. We don't have the oil for that just yet. Oh, now this is actually quite big is we're going to get Al Albert Einstein. He's usually the one I hope to get if I'm doing any sort of science game. So I'm, I'm quite happy that I've managed to snag him. Uh, because he's going to give us plus four science in every single research lab, which should take us from about 863 science per turn to about 913. Not the biggest jump, but still super optimal. Let's grab a few more arsenals. If we are heading towards flood barriers, it would be helpful if we could produce. It would be helpful if we could produce a variety of military engineers. I probably should have built more of those throughout the game. Outlaw Cove purchased. Boom, that's our lighthouse. Boom, shipyard purchase. Guamares goes to 21 production, making it an incredibly productive city. We will grab that waterfront and we will also plant some more lumber mills. Okay, military engineer is going to step forward and start the railroad. You're going to make yourself along the road. We'll buy another builder. We need to keep a constant stream of builders going here. Now, we can stem the tide of the builders eventually, but it'd be much better... If towards the very late game, we manage to build up a stockpile of them um, because there's a very special purpose that we can make use of them for, um, which is feeding them into spaceports, which, but there is a way you can do it that is like super hyper efficient where you build up a stockpile of builders and then just drop them all in over a few turns. Coastal raids are going fantastically. We're stealing so much culture, so much faith. Why don't you go ahead and siphon funds as if you're two levels higher. We'll come in here. Oh yeah, lovely. Look at that coastal raid. 100 gold, 350 culture. I feel like I'm making pretty fun use of the brigand, the brigand court. 
I mean, I'm not going to say it's the most effective use of it that it's ever, you know, it's ever seen, but I'm, I'm having some fun with it. Shoot gear, shoot gear. Take your promotion. Get me that extra trade route, actually, which is pretty sick. I'll pop over to Noor. And I'm only going to buy, well, maybe I could buy a few. Yeah, I'll buy those three traders. That's fine. The amount of gold being produced in Noor, by the way, is absurd. Over 1,600. Half of the city's production is coming from trade routes. That's like the absurdity of this city is insane. We do want to maintain trade routes with our allies over others because the Allied trade routes have the special ability to provide a, not necessarily as much gold, but tons, and I mean tons of food and production, which is going to help us finish the spaceport projects a lot quicker. Okay, Franz von Hipper, I'll take you. We got the research lab in here. Let's make sure we work on the science, the food. Did you ever build an arsenal? No, but we will build it now. Water park is banging out here. Uh, we'll grab the Ferris wheel because that's two amenities. A couple of our cities have dipped down, which might mean we need to buy luxuries. Nope, no luxuries. Uh, we will sell off luxuries though. We got the boardwalk in Anfer. Seems to be just generally improving the tiles. Do we go for the seaport? What do we go for next in here? I think we can, I think we could squeak in a water park for the amenities. So yeah, now instead of taking three turns to get there, our builders should, can I, I can't click on, there's so many traders on this tile, it's hard to click on the builder. And it's easy to click off him. Um, he can get here in two turns, basically, with this extra little chunk of railroad. Instant create a battleship. Fine, this battleship has a promotion. Boom, bombardment, let's level that up again. We'll level it up next turn, that's fine. Just getting rid of those great admirals, honestly. I don't need them. That's the thing. I just really don't need them. They are surplus to requirements. Um, how's the flooding going? Okay, next sea level is 121 turns. So we are pretty fast out the gate when it comes to getting our uh, flooding stuff under control. All right, pillage, 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 pillage. Lovely, plus two error score. There's social media. So now we can plug in the incredibly important and incredibly powerful social media card here. This is worth... 378 culture per turn. I'm going to plug that in because this should cut down the number of research turns to get to globalization by a couple. Um, I'll plug that in over a thalos thalosocracy. Confirm. And then we're probably going to go to digital democracy. No, we're going to go for synthetic technocracy. Sorry. Yep, 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 yep. Synthetic technocracy is the play because they have the plus three power in all cities and 30% production towards all city projects. This will guarantee um, our, our labs being powered. Let's also get space initiative on Pingala. It's a 30% production boost to space programs. And we're gonna go ahead and take Pingala and plug him into Andy Frazier at this point. And then we'll take Reina and we'll plug her into Stony Baloney where we'll probably get another spaceport. We'll think about that one. Usually you want a city with about 100 production with a spaceport. Anything below that feels really, really weak and ineffective at the stated goal of speeding up the science victory. I did not mean to conquer the city of Gyor, um, so I'm glad that I rolled poorly on my attack because my goal was to spook him. I want him to see that his, oh, my cities are low on health, which means I'm being attacked, which means I should surrender and give good terms. Okay, computers is researched, giving us access to the flood barrier. That's excellent. Next up, we definitely want to get access to the moon landing. But really what we want to do is we want to research all these one-turn technologies back here. All these cheap, easy techs that we haven't quite gotten around to. So we're going to come back and we're going to backfill up through the tech tree so that we can burst out and take the moon landing. Because... It's kind of hard to explain this, but basically we want to research these texts and have technology overflow into one of these texts. It's slightly more optimal. It's hard to explain why, and I don't exactly fully remember why. I just know that there's something in me telling me it's true. Somebody did the math on it, and I saw a thing. Hey, if anyone has that video, remind me. Okay, Pete Brenhofer finished a library. We're going to go ahead, or finished a campus, rather. We're going to buy the library. We're going to buy the navigation school. Boom. And we're going to buy the research lab. We're going to tell them to focus on science production and food. Um, we're almost at a thousand science. Then we'll come back here and we'll grab those breakwaters for the growth. We're going to feed our very... Oh, unfortunately, the industrial zone got smoked in here, dude. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and drop the builder into the project that took four turns off it. Let's grab this and start repairing. Ugh. 
Now that does not feel good. Okay, minus five influence. Boom. Settle the city of Angra. Pop in there. Pop in there. Boom. And boom. And snap. I'm building some fishing boats so I can sail the salty seas and visit your mommy. Oh, boom. Rapid deployment is done. Boom, boom. Uh, water park is finished. Flood barrier getting online. That's a two turn flood barrier. That's an easy pick just to make sure we defend any potential tiles. Okay, I don't see anything else we can pillage here. Let's kind of swing back down this way. Swing our way down to the underground danger zone. All right, swing your way around. Shoot this twice. Pillage that tile. Remember, every campus pillage is a huge boost to our science, like huge. And buy another seals tile. Excellent. I mean, every single one of these tiles that we purchase is marginal, but all of the effort we put into building our empire has made that marginal. It wasn't always marginal, but each subsequent one that we build, each subsequent one that we buy, each subsequent one that we implement does eventually become marginal. Okay, let's build another couple of railroads. Oh, I have no iron. Right. I need to buy iron. I'll sell off some resources. No luxuries are on offer. I'll buy strategics. I'm looking for iron. Boom and boom. Build that railroad build that railroad. Now, if I click on that builder, he can just about almost make it to the city, almost make it to that spaceport. Um, cute little trick, by the way, I can't actually put the builder into the spaceport project, but you can build two things simultaneously. If you switch to the spaceport project, insert the builder, then switch back to the workshop. You can basically repair a district while you're building it. It's, it's a little bit of a micro intense move, particularly if you're playing something like multiplayer, but it is a very, very functional and very viable way to do things. Um, and I do it literally every time I'm playing some sort of uh, civilization that can utilize builders like that, like the Aztecs or China. You know, you could use China to build multiple wonders at the same time. It's crazy. No. All right, military science is completed. We're going to blast the city twice. And then boom, pillage for another 360 science. Very tasty. You could become an ironclad. I don't actually want ironclads because they're just not as good, in my opinion. Tomar, let's buy the crab tile. Well, crabs aren't the greatest growth tile. They do actually do pretty good. Two food, two production is a pretty reasonable tile, right? It takes two food to work a tile. So if you're getting two food from the tile, everything other than the food is profit. We have just linked two cities, getting us error score. And we have just linked... Oh, to here, we need to repair that factory and we also need to buy ourselves another builder. That Earth satellite project is getting done pretty darn quick. I haven't been perfectly diligent on my builder purchasing, but you know, it is what it is. Would be nice to have some high speed cavalry to run in here and swoop and pillage those districts, but eh, you can only do so much. Scotland has declared war on me. No, a city state. No, Scotland denounced me and a city state declared war on me, which is somehow much funnier. Right, lovely. Oh, do you know what I should do? I should actually get a seaport so this guy can get a uh, plus 15 combat strength. Let me just go into Nor, my capital. I'll buy the seaport. Boom. That'll get me a little bit of extra gold in here. We're up to a voluptuous 18, just under 1800. And now this guy has 25 combat strength from the seaport, which means he should absolutely eviscerate the walls of the city while also pillaging. Okay, Orion Henry. Um, I think we need to get the dry dock to build military engineers. Seems quite important. So we're going to go ahead and make our way in that direction. Go ahead and grab me the Ferris wheel. It wouldn't be bad to get the seaport. Why not? I think the Ferris wheel is better, better value because it gives you two amenities. Now, I don't need a fully built water park in every city, but the ability to get three amenities from just a district in a single building is insane. Okay, so we got the harbor in here. Let's grab that waterfront. And so at long last, the railroad goes all the way to the spaceport, meaning my builders can get there in one turn of walking, which was, of course, the goal. Aid request accepted. We do now have access to oil, so we should have found a lot of oil in the water. We also got globalization, which gives us access to two really important policies. The first one is International Space Station for 407 science, and also when we actually start doing the trade the projects, the e-commerce is insane. Plus two production from every trade route is really, really powerful. Now it's not quite as good as Visselbanken, plus the 
democratic legacy, but we can we can do some interesting things with this. But our science is now up to 1400. Now, my goal at the start of this episode was to double my science from 400 to 800. I have tripled my science and I think now I'm aiming to quadruple my science. OK, feed the builder in, brings that down about three turns. We're also going to bring another builder over and we'll switch this over to repairing the coal power plant itself. And we'll grab ourselves one final builder, which should finish this project for us. We are about to research steel, which gives us access to the tower bridge. So now all we need from the cultural tech tree is optimization imperative. I believe that's true. Um, yeah, I think I think that's all we need from the culture tech tree. Once we have optimiz optimization imperative and synthetic technocracy, basically we can stop caring about culture income and focus fully on science and accumulating resources for our space race. All right, let's pillage this. We'll pop in, we'll do a little bit more damage to the cities just to get some experience, make him fear us just a little bit more. Oh, I can't declare peace for another two turns. Right, I guess I won that war too hard. That is a problem you can have in Civ, believe it or not, is you can win a war too well and you end up with troops kind of just milling about, unsure what to do. Okay, we got steel unlocked, giving us plus one production from lumber mills. We also have artillery as well as bridges, which is really cool. Um, they give us culture to the theater squares. It's very cool. We also have the tower bridge. It's kind of an interesting thing. Can I actually build it anywhere? No, I'd probably have to build it somewhere over here, right? Yeah, it might be kind of fun to try to build. Okay, we got Adam Smith, the great merchant. Uh, we finished the spaceport in the capital. Let's, launch, let's move this uh, Earth satellite to here. Boom. Now, what happens if I cancel this? Can I then continue it in the capital? It can do it in three turns. Loving it. That's how long it takes this city because its coal power plant got wrecked, which don't feel good. Not a big deal. We can have our capital work on something else. It's got 250 production. Pretty good. Probably should get a waterfront in here. Almost certainly should get a waterfront in here. Where do I put it though? We got the breakwater in Pete Brenhofer. Let's grab the boardwalk. We got the warehouse in Orion Henry. We'll get the dry dock because we want to build military engineers. Apparently I have Adam Smith now. Was he the guy who wrote The Wealth of Nations? I don't remember. All those guys blend together in some weird early liberal philosophy Ouroboros. Honestly, that, if a talented artist could make like an early, <laughs> could make that, like the founding father Ouroboros edition. Oh God, that sounds horrifying. Okay, Mongolia is two eras behind us as well. So we're gonna go ahead and declare a um, colonial war against them. Now, again, our main goal is pillage. We're here to make money. We're here to loot their land. See their people driven before us. I cannot yet peace out Hungary. It's fine. He's going to be begging me for peace. His cities are under threat. The AI really hates it. Like, I cannot overstate how much the AI hates it when their cities get hit. To them, that is like the biggest indicator that they're losing a war. The AI, right, could send wave after wave of men to their death against your fortresses. Oh and unless you attack their cities at least one time, they'll be like, I'm doing great, man. I'm fighting in this territory. I'm, you know, we're making gains. But the second you shoot his city with a slinger, he'll be like, bro. Okay, listen, we got to start talking about an armistice. We got to start talking about like a peace deal. Simply put, the AI can talk shit, but they cannot take a hit. All right, coastal raid here for the gold. Uh, I believe I get 50 gold if I'm just coastal raiding anything. So it is worth it to coastally raid farms, even though that's not normally super worth it. Uh, we will make peace with you and I will demand all of your gold for 32 gold per turn is quite nice. So I would say we got pretty good value out of that war with Hungary. That would be my assertion. We need to get suzerainty of Mitla back, bring us up to 1500 science. And then we need to get suzerainty of Cardiff, boom, which brings us up to 1700 science. We have almost quintupled our science per turn in a single episode that is insanity G like actual craziness and we haven't even hit optimization imperative okay feed a builder into here that will actually launch the earth satellite completely exploring the entire map and getting me a really nice animation every now and again i do actually like to watch these animations because it's kind of cute right you see the rocket choo! It's impressive. It captures the vibe. It captures the feel. Um, 
I bet that at some point they had like they tried to do the capture the point of view from like uh, I don't know if you call it ground zero, but from like, you know, you, you pick a point here and you put like the camera here and you point it at the thing and it like looks up as the thing goes up into the sky. But I bet they were just like, when it, we never ever designed our engine to turn the camera that way. So we're just going to look at it from above. I feel like that was a discussion they had at some point in development. I would love if uh, one of the devs could confirm that if they watch my videos. Um, let's go ahead and build the tower bridge. It's going to take us a long time. It probably might not even ever be built before the game ends. But plus eight production on cities on the capital continent. Eh, seems pretty damn good. 8% seems like a weird number. I'm just going to say that. Waterfront is a go. Advanced flight is a go, which means satellite is a go the turn after. Uh, because we have overflow sites, there's a good chance we can research satellites in a single turn. Okay, let's make sure we trade with Ethiopia. And then after Ethiopia, we want to be trading with uh, city-states that we're suzerain of. And then after that, we want to be trading with Indonesia because we're allied with her. I need to make another ally. Could be Nubia. Nope, Nubia hates me. Um, am I really trading with all of their cities? Yeah, I guess I am. Okay. What's the production looking like in Nor? We're up to 330. 334.7, looking great. Um, I guess I will just pick a... Mmm, Banzambata. I could start building relationships with Congo. Um, go ahead and coastally raid this. Uh, you have a promotion. Let's take those promotions when we can. We have peaced out Hungary. We no longer need to worry about pillaging him. And then we can honestly just rotate back to Grand Colombia and hope that they've repaired enough of their empire for it to be worth it to declare war on them. Rarely is not the case, though. All right, so here comes a big turn. We did just get Optimization Imperative, which is going to allow us to do Synthetic Technocracy. We're going to go immediately unlock Synthetic Technocracy and completely revolutionize our situation here. Now, amenities are going to be a little bit harder to come by, but that's okay. We're going to just basically wipe out our whole government and start from scratch. So we definitely want liberalism. We definitely want Republican legacy. We definitely want democratic legacy. Also, I hate that you lose New Deal. It's such a good card, but like you just lose it. Let's take Vissel Banken. Make sure we take International Space Agency. We don't need collective activism anymore. We want the ISS. We definitely want e-commerce. We definitely want economic union, although we can lose this. It would be nice to have natural harbors. It would be, I think total war is a good military policy here because we are doing pillaging. Um, and I have a couple of slots left. And in particular, I really want gunboat diplomacy and containment. But I can probably just switch between gunboat diplomacy and containment when I need to. So we have just over, just, just a little bit over quadrupled our science in a single set of turns we're about to hit the moon landing and then we're about to hit the mars colony i'm pretty sure we can wrap this game up in the next episode i want to thank you guys very much for watching i love you all very much and i'll see you guys next time bye bye